Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Liz Truss pissed off everyone. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most damning moments from the career of the UK's shortest serving Prime Minister in history. Let us know in the comments how long you thought she'd last. Number 10. The infamous Conservative Conference 2014 was the year of Truss's infamous speech at the Conservative Party conference that has haunted her throughout her career. It was filled with bizarre facial expressions, drawn-out dramatic pauses, reluctant and confused applause, and strange statements from the then Secretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. One highlight includes mentioning that the UK produces more cheese than France, then stating we import two-thirds of our cheese and theatrically calling this a disgrace. Later, Trust cheerfully tells the audience she'll soon be in Beijing to open up new pork markets. Then, while smiling broadly, she waits for the scattered clapping. The whole speech was a weird mess that baffled people. Number 9. The Affair Apparently, to be Prime Minister of the UK at the moment, you need to have a turbulent personal life filled with romance and scandal. And Truss certainly fits the mould. She married her husband Hugh O'Leary in 2000. Yet, only four years later, Truss began an affair with then-Tory MP Mark Field, who was appointed her political mentor. You might remember Field as the politician who was suspended for aggressively handling a Greenpeace activist in 2019. After around 18 months together, their affair ended. Whilst Truss's relationship with O'Leary survived, Field's marriage to Michelle Acton didn't, and the two divorced. In 2009, some members of the South West Norfolk Conservative group attempted to deselect Truss due to the affair. Number 8. Attacking France Liz Truss found herself heavily criticised after her response at a Conservative leadership hustings. When asked if French President Emmanuel Macron was a friend or foe, she replied that the jury was still out, which is pretty insulting to one of the UK's allies. Macron responded by affirming that the UK is an ally despite its leader. Yikes. Truss has a history of mucking up relationships with other countries. As Foreign Secretary, when negotiating Brexit with the EU, she commented about offering support to Baltic allies across the Black Sea, even though the Black Sea is 700 miles away. Then, after speaking to Russia about Ukraine, Russia's Foreign Minister described the conversation with Truss as the deaf talking to the blind. Number 7. Not great with geography When leading the UK, the Prime Minister should be pretty knowledgeable about its geography. After all, it would be pretty embarrassing for the PM to state the wrong location in a public forum, right? Hmm. During the Conservative Party hustings in 2022, Truss talked about energy measures she would prioritise. She then mentioned the nuclear reactors that are produced where they are in Derbyshire. The only problem, the event was taking place in Cheltenham, Gloucestershire, around 100 miles away. Whoops. But it shouldn't be too surprising, as Truss has a history of not knowing her surroundings. After announcing her intention to run for leadership, she tried to leave the room. Instead, she got lost in the crowd and needed assistance. Number 6. Flip-flop Brexit Brexit is a touchy subject for many. It's also a subject that can cause many arguments around the table at family gatherings when Leavers and Remainers clash. Before the 2016 referendum, Truss was an ardent EU fan. She stated we would be better off staying in the Union and didn't want a barrier of entry for her daughters to work or live in Europe. But jumping forward a year to 2017, Truss changed her mind completely. She claimed she would vote to leave if the referendum happened today, as the economic problems of the exodus had, apparently, not come to light in her view. This flip-flopping not long after the result has made Truss look disingenuous to many. Number 5. Fracking. Though when she served as Environment Secretary, she began by claiming to care deeply about climate change, she later began a tradition of consistently voting against green policies. 
not to mention taking a private jet on an extremely long flight to visit Australia. But when she ascended to the top office, one of her flagship policies was to lift the ban on fracking. This was despite opposition from Tory MPs and despite fracking having next to no support from the British public, with fracking operations rarely happening because of so much local outrage. And then she decided she was going to try and stop farmers from building solar panel arrays on their own land, while also saying she wanted farmers to have more freedom. Number 4 the nuclear option. Oh boy. In a world where leaders have access to weapons of mass destruction, we all hope they'll show restraint when that possibility of unleashing Armageddon comes up. But not to us. Appearing at a Conservative Hustings event in Birmingham in August 2022, the host John Pienaar asked her how she would feel if she had to launch nuclear weapons, even if it meant global annihilation. Lacking any emotion whatsoever, Truss declared it's an important duty of the Prime Minister and she's ready to do that. When Pienaar asked again how she would feel, Truss just repeated that she was prepared to press the button. This blasé attitude towards possibly destroying the world certainly raises many red flags. Number 3. The Queen This is BBC News from London. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We know that Liz Truss didn't have anything to do with the Queen's passing. She was 96 years old after all, but it was still shocking to have the country's longest reigning sovereign pass away after just two days from Liz Truss taking office. What followed was a 10-day period of mandatory national mourning in which the government totally shut down, save for trying to rush out Truss's energy price guarantee policy. She was also a bit of a damp squib at the funeral itself. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. As the Prime Minister, she was required to make a speech, but her speech was so poorly delivered and ended up not making an awful lot of sense. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Number two, the mini-budget. Is this the single most disastrous, most damaging economic policy in British history? It might be, as it saw mortgage rates quadruple, pensions get threatened and the pound sink to its lowest level against the dollar of all time. People are really well. worried. What is happening is frightening for many people. Whether they hold mortgages, whether they're savers, whether they've yeah. got a, a, a pension. Nearly every economist in the country and most bankers in the city warned against this, but Truss and Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng ignored them. Truss then disappeared from public view for days until returning for a series of shockingly bad local radio interviews in which she was asked how could she sleep at night. Carrie in Birchington says, what on earth were you thinking? The country was already in a state of recession. And another says, how can we ever trust the Conservatives with our economy again? Finally, Truss decided to scapegoat Kwa Tang and gave him the sack though it was initially claimed that the budget was devised by both of them. I and the Chancellor have taken decisive action to deal with that. Number one, shortest PM in history. I came into office at a time of great economic and international instability. The mini-budget led to resignations, sackings and the installation of Jeremy Hunt as the new Chancellor of the Exchequer. Though Hunt's role was to steady the ship, the ship certainly was not steadied. I recognise, though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. The day after Truss's disastrous PMQ's appearance on October 19th, in which she publicly went against policy Hunt had only announced at the beginning of the week, she appeared outside number 10 to announce she'd be resigning after just 45 days. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. But far from the Tories anointing a chosen and tested successor, another leadership election was launched, though this one was set to only last for a week rather than two months, after allegations that her cabinet ministers were bullying MPs. Do you agree with our pigs? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.